YouTube, hope you're all fantastic. My name's Chris, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to quickly overclock your controller in the most painful, free way possible. It's been a request by a lot of you guys and you guys wanted an updated, really simple, short, quick, easy video, so here we go, okay? So in this video, we're gonna be using the PS5 controller to overclock, it overclocks exactly the same as the PS4. These are the two controllers that I kinda recommend. Um, the other controllers, like your yeah, Xbox, I don't have a clock very well. They're kind of hardware locked at 125 hertz, which is about seven milliseconds delay. It's not very nice. Astro C40, I believe they come, they're about 400 hertz out of the box, but they don't have a clock very well. I've worked on a few modded controllers. They didn't have a clock very well either. So I recommend most of you guys to sort of get a PlayStation 4 or 5 controller, even if it is one of those controllers that might not necessarily look like a PlayStation controller, but has the PCB of a PlayStation 4 or of a PlayStation 5. You'll be totally fine here overclocking it so what i want you to do is i'm showing you a few quick links i'll put something together and make your life real easy go to my google drive links down in the below the description there's a little overclock controller zip go ahead and download that drag it to your desktop we're getting all these files from github this is x input test to quickly measure our polling rate to make sure we've actually done something and we've improved the polling rate these four windows can convert the PlayStation driver to the Xbox driver. One, so we can actually view the tests, and two, because it kind of runs a little bit better with the Xbox driver. We have the overclocking software, and this is a little bit later in the video for more advanced if you guys want to try overclocking the controller further than a thousand hertz. Okay, so go ahead and download that. Link should be in the description. Extract files, okay, just straight to the desktop. Now this folder should come with no extra subfolders. It should look like that. What I want you guys to do is go to program files. So your C drive, program files. I want you to drag that straight to your program files folder. Okay. It might come up with the admin prompt. Just press yes. Okay. Open the over overclock controller folder and drag the shortcuts straight to the desktop. Or you can drag them anywhere in your start menu, wherever you want. These are the tools that we're going to be using and they're all simple, pain-free and easy to go. All right, what are we going to do first? Plug in your controller to the PC with relatively a decent cable. Don't use some dodgy cable. Try to plug it into the back of the PC in the motherboard, preferably in the actual CPU chipset port, okay? A way you can kind of check that sometimes you go to device manager, go view devices by connection, scroll down. AMD will look a little bit different here, but this is the Intel hub. And what I want to make sure is that the actual controller is connected here. Okay, so that's connected directly. Some boards have an as media port. You might not get as good results with that. This is generally the path closest to the CPU. I don't want to get involved with uh, which USB port. There are generally a USB port that is closer to the CPU. It varies on motherboards. So you could try different USB ports if you wanted to. But generally, as long as you're actually in the um, CPU chipset, a USB port or whatever it's called, you should be totally fine. Another thing I like to do once I've got my controller plugged in, go straight to sound settings sound control panel, go here, set your sound device unless you're using the controller as a sound device. Set this back because it gets really annoying, okay? Every time you're plugging your controller, I like to disable these, okay? And another thing I like to do is permanently disable these. So I'll go find the controller off the actual USB hub. So this is devices by connection, going down here. See wireless controller, I disable that because I'm not using that as a sound device at all. Boom, that's completely disappeared. We should be good to go. So first thing I want us to do is to go ahead and install these four windows. Go ahead and run this as administrator, okay? I want you to um, press uh, yes. So some of you actually might need their net framework installed. So go ahead and install that if you need to. While well, I'm here and doing it, just let you guys know you're all gonna be on 64 base system. So go ahead and install that, get the direct link. You can do this through actual um, programs and features through a control panel, but we'll just do it this way. Go ahead and run that and install that. You may need to restart the PC. That was relatively pain free, didn't need to restart, so we're all good. Just click program folder, make sure you run DS4 Windows as administrator. Click program folder, that'll be fine. Okay, so we want to install this driver because this is going to convert the PlayStation driver to the Xbox driver. Go ahead and install this driver. Okay, just click that, just accept, install, should be good to go. Go finish, finished. We can go skip version, I'm not going to bother updating, don't really need to. Just press skip version, okay. What I want you to do is probably more or less unplug your controller, plug it back in. That would be a good idea. And we should have something that pops up. If it doesn't pop up, we might need to restart the PC. I don't have anything popping up right now, so I'm going to go ahead and restart the PC now. So I've just restarted the PC. We should be good to go. Just to let you guys know, the driver that actually installs 
you don't really get an option to uninstall it through a control panel. So if you have ever issues in the future, go to device manager. You want to remove it completely. Just letting you guys know. Go view devices by connection. Scroll all the way down until you find something called the Firus Virtual Gamepad Emulation Box. That's the driver. So if you ever want to remove it later, if you've had any issues, it wouldn't just go back to default or whatever. You can remove it here and click delete. The actual driver because uh, uninstalling ds4 windows doesn't actually remove this driver which is a little bit annoying now you guys won't have to do this but i'm just showing you just in case you ever run into issues you'll want to get rid of the driver completely anyway we've restarted the computer we'll run this as administrator okay and hopefully it'll pick up the controller now it has which is perfect we don't need to do too much in here just go to profiles new yes and then press apply Okay, and we don't really need to do too much here. I just like to head go ahead and click um, just name this as a profile I'll just call this save save it set this to the save profile away you go go straight to settings go to run it startup start minimized close minimizers and then we can exit out of that so this will always run in the taskbar right here okay this will always be converting the playstation driver to the xbox driver so first of all we should be able to get a bit of a reading you can use this software to get a bit of a reading if you like Simply by going profiles, going to your save profile, special actions, controller readings. You can see here, this is about um, 3.5 milliseconds delay, as you can see. So we haven't done an overclock. That's just the default delay. But I prefer to use the X input test. It's a little bit more sort of like um, accurate and whatnot. So we don't need to really do anything. And we just go back here. Okay. Use the X, X input test. Um, go ahead and run that. Now it'll say ready, waiting for samples. So we were going to spin our left stick really fast in a circle right here. See what can we try to be as consistent as we can so it's going to take 2000 samples and give us an average of a polling rate now technically speaking this should be um as you can see it did say um 125 hertz polling rate but it was incorrect i had to run the test again because you can get human error here so maybe do it a few times try to be consistent it's about 270 ish give or take polling rate i mean i wasn't i should probably run it a few more times and be a bit more consistent but you've kind of got the point out of the box these controls kind of come around that uh polling rate um, so what we want to actually do now is go and apply the overclock. So what I'd recommend to do, you don't have to install the certificate unless you want to overclock it past a thousand, but just go ahead and install it anyway. Run this certificate and go install certificate and current user would be fine and go next, finish and then okay. And that's done. Once you've installed that certificate, you actually won't need this shortcut anymore unless you're going to be doing a fresh install of Windows. So this should last with the actual user account. So we'll be fine to delete that. Setup is what we want to run. Run as this administrator. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. You need to click all here. We need to find something that says controller. It can be a little bit tricky and a little bit annoying to find sometimes, but just find, try to find something that says controller. Ignore the fact that it actually says wireless controller here. It'll look something similar like this. Look for something that says controller and you should be fine. Click on this here, right here. Click on filter on device. Yes, yes. Change to a thousand because we want to put in a thousand Hertz polling rate. Click install service, restart. Okay. Now wait a little bit. Okay. Now I recommend unplugging and replugging the controller. So we unplug it, it'll disappear from here. Plug it back in, it should reappear and it should say it's still in a thousand hertz, which it does. It says rate a thousand, as you can see here. Now we're going to use the X input test again and we're going to see what kind of delay we get on this controller. And this is not just for the joysticks, although we are measuring with a joystick right now. This is also for um, basically all your buttons and everything like that. So this test is kind of bugging out a little bit on me, but that is actually under a thousand, like faster than a thousand hertz. As you can see, that's 0 0.73 milliseconds, give or take, which is technically, I would say, technically speaking, a 125, 1200, 1250 hertz polling rate. Excuse me, I've got my kids in the background distracting me. Technically speaking, give or take, I mean, you've got a little bit of variation here. Now, go play a few games. You might need to change your dead zone a little bit. If it doesn't feel stable doing micro movements, maybe your PC isn't quite up to the task. If it isn't like really super stable here and you're getting like values from like three and then it's jumping down to 0 0.7, it's not stable. Try a different cable, try a different controller, um, try a different USB port on your motherboard. It's not stable. This needs to be dead stable here. Now, obviously, See, this is a little bit lower here than this one but this is a little bit like kind of human error here generally most of them are like 73 here so it's relatively a stable polling rate now some people might still find that to be a little bit sort of stuttery or not as stable if that's the case you can dial it back a little 
bit you know if you want you can try maybe 500 so i'll try to show you how to try that i like to recheck all of these things just 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 you know just in case it bugs out so i'll recheck that recheck that i'll change that to 500 install service restart do the same thing we'll wait a little bit then we'll unplug the controller plug it back in unplug it plug it back in make sure it says 500 it does okay and then we'll use the x input test again so if a thousand felt stuttery for you and you've sort of tried everything try 500 okay it's still going to be a little bit better now i don't think it worked correctly i think i need to restart the pc i'm pretty sure it bugged out here so i'm going to restart the pc now because that is the wrong value that we're getting in the x input test all right so strangely enough for me i tried redoing 500 and even tried 250 for some reason for me my like i don't know if it's like the usb port or the actual controller i'm using but it seems still be trying to force a thousand which is max which is a little bit crazy but usually how it's supposed to behave is it will like bump it down um from what i've seen especially if you're going to be using ps4 controllers so have a bit of a play around with it and see how you go um but that pretty much covers sort of everything if you guys if you guys do not like um the control overclocking you want to turn it off quite simply all i want you to do is go and click on this click this to default uncheck that and then just click restart okay once you've done that Go to the DS4 program, all right? Go ahead and go to settings. You can check that. You uncheck those two if you like to. Yeah, then press yes, so that won't run on start. Go to device manager. Quite simply, click view devices by connection. Scroll down, click the Safari as a virtual gamepad emulation bus, and then go ahead and uninstall that driver. Restart your PC. That'll reset it all back to default. And then that's it. So I don't think I need to explain too much more. There are huge gains that can be had by just doing this. You get so much lower delay in your controller. Very, very similar to a mouse because gaming mice are a thousand hertz. So it's literally a no brainer until they actually bring out a proper PC controller that's in a thousand hertz out of the box. You guys are going to have to do this. Now you can try to overclock it further past a thousand hertz. Run setup and go to setup and go open file location. Okay. And there is a little bit of a tutorial here on how you can do that. There are some scripts that you can run to try to force, um, you know, 4,000 hertz, 8,000 hertz, 2,000 hertz. In my experience, trying to do this with controllers, never had any luck getting it any stable. Also, something I'll mention, it is covered here. It's exactly the same method. You're just using it for your controller. So it's a little bit more in depth in here if you guys wanted to try it out for yourselves. But um, I honestly think a thousand hertz, if it's stable and call it a day, in my experience playing around with this, it's very, very unstable trying to push it any further. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe, like, share around. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.